Okay, we're live. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning, Anne. It's so good to see you. It's good to see you. It's been quite a long time. Let's get this show started. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ann Rossley. I'm here with my dear friend and colleague, Kyle Harvey. Together, we sell real estate in downtown Chicago with Baird and Warner's Gold Coast office. And we love to dish every week about what's going on in real estate in downtown Chicago. However, we haven't been together in a while. For those of you watching, he, let me just give you a couple things that have happened since we saw you last. Kyle has enjoyed a milestone birthday. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tom and I went to Portugal. We bought a house in Connecticut. Excuse me. We rented a house in Connecticut. We bought a condo in Chicago and moved twice. Um, Everyone does. In Paris. Um, we've just been really busy and um, busy with the market as well in the midst of all that stuff going on. And we'll talk about the real estate market. For those of you who have seen me and congratulated me on Greenwich, I have two things to say. Number one, we're a bi-coastal, well, not bi-coastal, we're a Chicago Greenwich family, not getting divorced. We're just going back and forth because Tom took this amazing job in uh, Ryberg, New York with Bellhaven Investments. And number two, I'm going to be um, staying here in Chicago, but opening an office in Greenwich at some point in the future. Um, so that's that news, and we'll keep you posted on that front. But meantime, business is robust in Chicago for both Kyle and myself, and we are committed to this show and helping you find real estate in Chicago. Would you say that's a fair assessment of what's happened? Totally fair assessment. Okay. Let's get started. Let's tell everybody what's going on in the market. You want to do market stats? If we could, yeah. Here we go. And let me remove our names. Before I get too into it, okay. So this is the, oh, okay. This is the first time we're new, using a new system, so I have to get used to it. As usual, we're going to look at those properties around the lakefront communities. That's the market that you all, as our clients, are familiar with. Basically, from the South Loop up to Edgewater and all along the lakefront, and one community to the west, such as Logan Square, Roscoe Village, West Town. All right, let's look just at houses. Um, all right, so single family homes closed in the month of May, 84. Down from the year before, the high was 231 in June of 21. Homes under contract, 93. Look at that rise since December when we were so low, down 31% versus previous year. Homes for sale. 264 up a bit. That's pretty good. But look at the trend over the last five years. Ooh. <laughs> We're going to talk about that inventory. Oh. Kyle's got some things to tell us about inventory. Um, supply of homes. This is absorption rate. How many months does it take to sell what's currently on the market given the rate of sale? 3.4 is up a little bit, but this is still a seller's market. Yeah. Uh, seller's market, yeah. I always get confused. All right. Median price for a single family home, million two six five. After our big push in the pandemic, uh, we're still in this one two six five range. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Price per square foot continues to rise at 386 per square foot for a single family home in this market. And the number of, this was an interesting statistic, showings per listing has gone down a bit. And this is the best leading indicator of the frenzy of the market or lack of frenzy in the market. 3.9, you know, look at this compared to 2018, 2019. I mean, it's still strong. What it basically means is if your house is for sale, you should be getting about four showings a month. And that's hard for people to hear. 
that's hard for sellers to hear. They want much more frenzied activity, but yeah. that's where we're at. Yep. Okay. Quick look at condos. 1,078 condos closed in the month of May <clears throat> down versus previous year. But look, that was like a high. Yeah. Crazy. 994 condos under contract. Again, look at it. I mean, compared to uh, previous months over the last five years, still very strong. For sale, 2369. Mm -hmm. Let me give you that again. <laughs> Not a lot of inventory. No. Month supply, three months worth of supply for condos, low inventory. Median sales price, $399. we have been in this $399 to $400 for quite some time. Again, after an appreciation rise. Showings per listing, 5.8. Stronger than single family homes, interestingly enough. Maybe people are going back to condos with the interest rates a bit higher. I don't know. But um, very strong for condos. Okay. Now, these are a couple of weird slides. Condo sales year to date. Home sales year to date is the next one. We're going to really dig into this later in the show. Um, but basically, this is January through May, 23, 22, 21. And we're way off versus previous years. But we're going to put that in context for you in a second. Same thing with single family home sales down. Okay, showings. You know, again, this is the best leading indicator of where we're going with the market uh, in uh, Midwest Real Estate Data MLS 233.9. I know everybody, it's a weird number. They took January of 2014, made it an arbitrary 100. So we are 233.9 versus January of 2014. The best way to look at these numbers is to compare them month over month. <clears throat> and basically, it just says, you know, very strong showing. And it's the same in the Midwest. We're tracking with the Midwest and we're tracking with national. So, okay, mortgage rates. Um, this is national averages with Freddie Mac, 30-year fixed, 6.71 last week. Here's the range over the last 52 weeks, 4.99 to 7.08. And this little black line here is where we stand today versus the 12-week numbers. So this is the national. Let's go back for a second. I got um, information this week from... Uh, from a lender here in Chicago at, um, at Key Mortgage. Um, rates for both condos and single family homes are all here in the low to mid sevens as of Friday. Um, so these rates, are that that's without paying points, which can affect things. And it will vary based on your credit score, loan to value, property type, occupancy, number of units and loan amount. But um, they are, they're, they're a little bit higher than um, the U.S. weekly average. The other thing to consider is you are going to pay a little bit more for a condominium as opposed to a single family home. So keep that in mind. And uh, there are other ways, as Kyle said, to buy down your rate or to do an adjustable, if that makes sense for you. But uh, OK, Zumper's rental. Uh, look at this graph over the last three years of where rental rates have gone in Chicago. Um, it's getting more and more expensive to rent. And so we would recommend you consider buying. Um, this is the national uh, averages for Zumper. And you can see we're like number 18 in terms of rental affordability for a one bedroom and a two bedroom. Chicago market has gone up six and 7% year over year just in one year in the cost of renting in downtown Chicago. So that's it. That Those are the numbers in a nutshell. That's really interesting. One of the questions I have gotten from a, um, a seller client is, do we feel that the market is slowing? And what's, what's your sense of what's going on this week um, in the re residential real estate market in Chicago? Um, in terms of showings on my properties, I'd say it's a little bit slower in terms, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I have some buyers that are still out there looking, can't find what they want. I sense it. Um, I, I, here's my, <clears throat> my perspective. 
I always see a bit of a dip toward end of May, beginning of June, as school comes to an end. You have the college graduates, you have the schools coming to a close. People turn their attention to that for about two to three weeks. And then typically end of June through July, we're pretty good and active until we get to the August doldrums. Now that's a typical year, right? Yeah. Um, at this point, I can't characterize it as anything more than that typical annual dip, but um, you know, we talked about unicorn years. Should we go right into our unicorn? I just want to provide my own sense. I'm, I'm okay, sensing that inventory um, disappointments are, meaning it's so low, that buyers are sort of pooping out. And um, more at the higher end and more at the middle end than at the lower end where buyers are desperate to get out from, up, from the rising rents. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got a um, entry level buyer right now who um, we make appointments and um, before the time of making the appointment to the showing time, They're gone, uh, right? it goes under contract. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and that's in, that's in the Gold Coast, which has been sort of slower because there's so many condos available. Um, but it, it, good things are going fast. So it's it's interesting. Um, I hope I, I sense you're right that once we get get all the um, the graduation, the schools out, let's get ourselves organized for summer done activity will pick up but i'm also sensing that it's it's not all of july it's sort of to like july 15th that yeah. um the market stays interesting and then it does slow down so yeah. we've got to for our buy for our sellers go now unless you have one of these um unusual properties that everyone's going to always take um and also price right because if you miss this opportunity right now, you're going to be quiet until the fall. That's my take. Okay, let's look at the unicorn stuff. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. So unicorns, um, this uh, little segment comes from Keeping Current Matters, which is something we subscribe to. Keep, Keeping Current Matters helps top real estate agents stay in touch with what's happening nationally. So. What we did here is we took a look at uh, what's happening nationally and put it in perspective for Chicago. Uh, the whole concept is what is a unicorn? A unicorn is something that's very rare. And in the case of uh, this, we're talking about the last two years. So we were just talking about showing traffic and uh, the last two years were very rare when you put it in perspective of 2017, 18, 19. And, and uh, let's, let's talk about why they were unicorn years. Crazy low rates. Right. And everyone wanted to move. The right. Stress of COVID made people realize I don't want to be in a condo or I don't want to be in a house. Um, what I don't want to be in this town. I don't want to. Right. right. Um, I got to move. There was something about the trauma of the COVID years that made people desperate to change. Right. And that combined with epically low rates on sale, fire sale rates. Yeah. That created that, um, those unicorn years. Absolutely right. So these are national numbers of showing traffic. So the question is, what does Chicago look like? And so we created this graph to show that, and it basically mirrors what's happening nationally. And, um, you know, there were headlines about people wanting to leave Chicago and Illinois, about wanting to go to the Sun Belt states. And yeah, maybe a little bit that was true, but that isn't the whole story of what happened in Chicago. There was just movement. Mm -hmm. um, the suburbs picked up, you know, it used to be, the North Shore, remember, was languishing and they had terribly low prices. And then all of a sudden, when people wanted to leave a condo in the city, they were thinking, oh, maybe the suburbs aren't so bad after all. Lake so give away houses 
it is so hot now. You know what I mean? It's it just exactly. I have clients right now who um bought a house in Naperville and I think they had five or six uh failed attempts until they found a, a good agent in Naperville. And that agent has now referred them back to me to sell their condo in the city. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, crazy town. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, home appreciation. Now, this is a national number. These are national numbers. But it shows, again, 7% appreciation year over year is good, right? Hugely good. We'll all take that. Exactly. But then we got into the unicorn years of 2020 and 2021, where we saw 11 and 18 percent nationally year over year. Crazy. But look, 2022 was 5 percent. That's healthy. Fine. Right. Yeah. Here's uh, Case Schiller for Chicago. So, you know, we never have the swings of the coasts or the Sun Belt. Just wait, because wait, I think our pink is off a couple. So the nine percent. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah. Pink's off. Pink Pink's should off. be here, folks. Pink should be here. Yeah. And instead, uh, I I did this graph a little bit differently in that um, it's showing total prices, so it doesn't look as like dramatic. Right. But nine percent and twelve percent still for Chicago, which traditionally is a very steady market, huge. And then 4% last year. So but, still. And part of this helps explain why Chicago has been so resilient in maintaining price appreciation because we never jerked up. We haven't jerked up since, I mean, ever. We just, right. we're a steady, eddy market. Exactly right. Okay. And then third component. <clears throat> and this is something we don't talk about very much, but foreclosures. Remember, there was a moratorium during uh, COVID on you can't couldn't kick a tenant out, you couldn't foreclose on anybody. So foreclosures were really low during those years versus the previous years. And I, I, here's lender mediated sales in Chicago. And so this is reported to MRED. When we do a closed report on one of our properties, we have to mark if it's a foreclosure or a Short sale. Aria, real estate owned or whatever, right? So um, you can see down to 2%. We're starting to edge up again in 2023. But look, we had 30% lender mediated sales in 2013. That was when we were still trying to get over the 2008 debacle. So, um, And there's no there's no sense in the, in the press because the, the handcuffs have come off or are coming off. Right. Um, there's no sense that we're going to leap up to 2013, 2014, 2015, any of these rates. So, um, you know. Well, well, and in large part, you know, lender lending practices have changed. Anybody who's bought a home in the last five years knows they have to, like, give a lot of documentation. You know, there are no no-doc loans anymore that there used to be. So, and then the other thing is during COVID, the average person was saving about – what was it? 25% of their income versus, you know, pre COVID years, people didn't save, they didn't have anything to spend it on. So and employment. people have much more equity and, and price appreciation. So people have much more equity in their homes today than they did before. So there's and no, and employment is high. So right? people right. have incomes. So this is all, this is all reason that we're, we're not alarmed by um, lender mediated sales this in the future. Absolutely. Exactly right. right. Well, so, you know, what it says is Chicago is a safe place for real estate. Safe, smart. Um, you're not going it, to, it's, it's not going to be big loss. It's, it's just calm, steady Eddie. The, it, it's not as exciting as Florida or as exciting <laughs> some of those places, but you know, we've got enough excitement in our lives. Do we really need to be worried about real estate? Right. Um, that's excellent, Anne. What's next? Well, what's, well you, you know, you had some interesting notes about, you know, the what's going on in the in the market and uh, yeah. what are the big topic things people should know about real estate? Well, so we've, been talking, we've been talking about, um, hold on, 
Um, a couple of things. I, I keep moving things around. I'm like, I got two screens, people. Um, you know, we. This is what's going. The big story of um, real estate around the country, and certainly in Chicago. And we talk about it every week. Inventory. Generally, the U.S. is significantly underbuilt for its population. That's absolutely true. At all price levels, there are not enough um, listings for the people who want to buy. So, right. So before we were talking about the fact that there is low inventory, now we're going to talk about why we have low inventory. So, so the, the U.S. Product is your number one thing, right? Yes. NAR, the National Association of Realtors, has issued a housing aff affordability report this month. So it came out in June, so at the start of June. And um, they show that at certain income levels, and um, well, first of all, at all income levels, the, we don't have enough housing for the number of people who want to buy. Um, and at certain income levels, we are missing even more properties. So I'm going to show you some graphs here we go. Let's see if I can share a screen. Let's see if I know how to do this. Slides. Okay. Okay. We're trying something new, people. Did that work? No. Oh, uh, which one do you want? I want, uh, there we go. Yes. So this is a graph from that housing um, affordability report. It shows on the far left column, I don't know if you can see my cursor going up and down, it shows income levels for Americans. And um, then it shows the share of listings that um, households can afford to buy at that level as of April 2023. Mm. The third column, or the central column, shows what it should be in a balanced market. In a market where um, um. everybody is able to afford whatever, um, you know, the home should be for this popular, this income level. But so for a hundred, there's the total market. So there should be 63.6% .6 of them should be able to buy a hundred thousand. So, or there I'm should be so 900, wait, wait, 285,000 homes available. Let me explain at 500,000. Um, a, a somebody who earns 500000 they should be able to afford to buy every single property on the market. So that's 100%. Okay. For people who earn less than um, 75000 for example, or 75000 or less, 51% of the homes on the market should be affordable to them in a balanced market because they are 51% of the population. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, so you get that sense. And the, the orange, pink, or whatever that color is, um, shows that the number of listings that are missing. Shrimp. That's a shrimp color. That's a shrimp color. It's like orangey pink. Um, <laughs> so for people earning $75,000 or less, they're in the market right now around the country. There are 320,000 properties missing. Oh, they're missing. Two. Okay, okay, okay. So these are the properties that are not in there. So there's instead, a 300,000 shortfall of properties. Instead of being 51% of total properties being affordable for them, only 23% of okay. total properties are affordable to them. There are 320,000 properties, thus, that would bring it up to 51%. So there, that's the number of properties missing from the market that would be affordable to them. Gotcha. Oh, so, I love statistics like this. I'm totally geeking out. This is very, I love this chart. Okay. So for them, it really shows you, yeah, that there's a real problem of, of uh, lack of product. But also look at um, the $500,000 earner who should yeah. have 100% available. There are still 990, 990 properties missing. So they there are it's short even at the top it's small short at the top but it's we are short everything so it's so for somebody let's say earning two hundred thousand they should be able to afford eighty eight percent almost eighty nine percent of of the properties on the market there are only seventy seven um, percent of the properties available to them so I'm just showing that 
for expectations in a balanced market where people could afford prop to buy properties, we are short. It shows this shows you how short it is. The next slide shows you um, some of the most difficult cities. So the the red on this slide, or the I think it's red, shows the share of affordable listings in reality. Okay. And the blue shows the share in a balanced market. So in El Paso, we have um, 36%, oh, 16%, and it should be 66%. In mm -hmm. Boise, it's 2%, and it should be 50% of property. So that is, it's pretty much a direct correlation to where we're seeing, you know, the buying frenzy and the price appreciation, which is your basic economics 101. And here are the towns, the cities, the metropolitan areas that are that have the that are closer to normal but they're places you know that are sort of you know not the top places to live right now so and so what we're showing is um there are some places where you can buy affordable properties and there's the, the amount that there should be but a lot of a lot of the country especially this you know this this graphic shows you how how many properties are missing? And this is because we haven't built. The U.S. hasn't built for a number of reasons, chief among them the affordability of inputs into construction. Also, um, you know, there, there, in Chicago, there have been um, discouragements of building in certain areas. So right, right. figure all this out. Anyway, that's, that is... That cool stuff and an affordability. Um, All right, so we so maybe something we should look at for next week is just to get a sense of new home builder starts. Uh, we'll see if we can find that statistic out to see if there's going to be relief in the short term or long term on this. So and there's one other thing that's affecting inventory in addition to um, lack of um, building. It's the rates. Um, these the low rates of the past five, six, seven years before rates went up last March. Um, you know, there's certain um, broker CEOs who are saying that the sub three percent rates are handcuffs on the market. Right, three percent of homeowners have rates. Current homeowners have rates at three um, percent or lower, and seventy percent. Say that number again. What percent have three percent? 30% of the market, 30% of current homeowners rates are 3% or lower. At 4% or lower are those 30% are those 30% plus another 70% of, of American homeowners today have interest rates below 4%. That is a handcuff on the market. So why right right right. So they consider this to be their interest rate to be an asset almost, right? Absolutely. It's an absolute asset. And they are only putting their homes up for sale if they have to move. So either we have to build a lot more, bring down affordability, um, or we have to do something. I mean, something has to happen with interest. We, are, we had a problem. The fact that the U.S. chose to save the economy after the last housing crisis with epic low interest rates. Right has now created a, house, a real housing problem in America. So on the other hand though, you know, uh, they want to slow down the movement, right? I know. I mean, I they yes, they're hinting that they want to raise interest rates again because it, inflation remains stubborn. And the indications are that um, the inflation rate will not have gone down this month. And so it's it's stubborn. We are. It's a very big challenge. I mean, the Fed basically wants to get us out of the uni unicorn years, right? Basically, yeah. they want to go back to a steady market, steady inflation, or you know, or lack of it. And and yet we have this problem with um, with housing, right? Housing. Well, and here's another thing to think about. Let's say you're <clears throat> Johnny Home Builder. And you see an opportunity in that, you know, maybe you have some land, you're thinking about building some spec homes or condo buildings or whatever it is that you focus on building. You got to go get a construction loan 
-hmm. which is twice what it cost you two years ago to get a construction loan. And then you're concerned that the buyers are going to be out there six months or a year from now when you finish that spec home because interest rates are anticipated to be higher. So it's like, how much do you risk as a home builder, right? It's so perfect it's a perfect store, man. Yeah. So, you no, know, these problems right. are intractable. If we had the answers, we'd be working for the Fed. That's right. Um, so one quick point, too, about interest rates. Um, some of my clients have been struggling the last three weeks. Um, rates really perked up high <clears throat> with these with the um, Congress and the debt ceiling. So I anticipate now that that's, you know, that they'll moderate a little bit in the next week or so. But, you know, to your point, some of this is anticipation, right? It's not just where the market is today. It's where everybody's anticipating that it's going. So that. And I think, I think for um, law, because interest rates, mortgage rates are such long-term rates. They're looking forward 30 years. They're looking forward 15 years. Um, I think we have to solve the debt ceiling issue, the fact that it becomes a crisis every time it comes up. I think we have to deal with that and make it a non-crisis. Yeah. Because we are creating, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot over something that is, it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, that's a topic that has to be handled for sure. It has to be handled in a way that does not affect the rest of the economy on a regular basis. <clears throat> we have a couple other things that we can talk about. We And we are at 801. But I do want to take one minute and show your listing. Okay. Is that okay? Probably. No, no, no. I think I, our viewers would be interested to see this listing. I think it's a gem. Yeah. Thank you. So can you shift over to this oh. one? You need me to. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remove. She's the director. This one? Yes. So okay. this is a great listing in the near south side um, called uh, Museum Park Tower. This is the third one, the most recently built one. It's beautiful. 233 East 13th. 233 East 13th. I love this building. And this listing is on the market for 580 with a deeded parking space included in the price. 585. 585. Oh, nice. It is a split floor plan, two bedroom, two bath, 1,380, I think, four square feet. So nice and big. It's got that outdoor balcony, really pretty in great condition. Look at that. Um, upgrades made since <clears throat> 2018. Nice um, galley kitchen, but open. So it's got the best of both. You don't get to see everything, but you see enough. And it's 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 really beautiful. Um, you know, pretty, oh, it is really a pretty apartment. So here's the difference in the floor plan. There are two um, two bedroom floor, there are a bunch of two bedroom floor plans, but um, on the market right now, there are two um, different types that are um, not corner units on the market. So this is my floor, the, my client's floor plan. And you see that it's two bedrooms and they're split, um, anchored on either side of the living space. But look how wide the living room is. Um, and that's a big deal because there are so many condos and I live in one of them where you come in and it's like shoot, straight like this. Whenever you get that width, it just changes the whole feel. So this is what the other one looks like where you have stacked living and dining space with um, the balcony, you know, so it's a much narrower view. It's deeper, but it's a much narrower <clears throat> Look at that. Oh, That's I'm so glad you did that. I love the back and forth. You know, yeah. so there, there it is. Those are all windows there. All windows. All something windows that you get east and west views. It's glorious. And one of the things that I noticed, which, which is really great in the summer, which has the hottest sun, for some reason, the sun is above it. So it stays very cool. You don't have direct, you have some direct light because it's south, but it's not pouring in in the same way that a West pours in because, you know, the sun sets in the West. So it's just this right. beautiful light apartment. And this is, this is a very nice apartment. I'm, don't kid me, but look at how much less sun exposure you get. Right. Right. Um, these are very competitively priced with a parking space included people. Yeah. We'll see that's lovely. Thank you, Anne, for reminding us to do that. 
Yeah, everybody, if you know somebody looking for a two bedroom, please consider this. This is a great property and uh, and there's so great much building, great location, uh, yes. quick commuting to everything, great amenities. Just yeah, I can't say enough about this. So many amenities outdoor. I didn't show a picture of the outdoor pool. Fantastic. That is um, so uh, and sun deck. So thank you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks for watching. Get back to us. Let us know your comments, questions, so we can address them on air. And uh, Kyle and I are going to be back next week. So thanks for watching Monday Morning Coffee with Kyle and Ann.